when I was 19, my father's fishing vessel, along with his crew of 15 fishermen, drifted into another country's territory, and they were then detained. This was actually an immensely painful experience in my youth, but there was a need for me to take charge. I helped to organize the families because they are mainly housewives who have been left behind. With the help of the MFA, my father and his crew finally returned to Singapore after more than two years. I realized very deeply the importance of helping people who need support and services. I had spent 13 years studying and working in the US and when I came home, NCSS was administering the Kapak Labor Scheme and I discovered that the driver must be the person with the disability. And I thought to add a class where you can drive a family member who has a disability. The story came full circle. After my mother had a stroke, she became a wheelchair user and I became a beneficiary of the Class 2 car park license scheme. If you do something that you care very deeply about, stay the journey and you will see the changes and you will see results. I actually grew up with a very strong sense of national identity. Every National Day Parade, my family and I will make it a point to watch it together. And we are always very impressed at how kilat the SAF soldiers are. So I signed up for the SAF Volunteer Corps back in 2015. In the SAF, I learned that we never achieve anything alone. It's always about togetherness. It's always about not leaving a man behind. And I realised that even in a workplace, that is really very true. We always work with colleagues, across teams, across groups, and together we get to achieve a lot more. The project that I remember most is the Appropriate Adult Scheme for Young Suspects. It's basically where a volunteer accompanies a young suspect to law enforcement interviews um, and provides support where necessary. Different stakeholders of different ministries and agencies have their own priorities and goals and objectives. And the most challenging part was to understand that all of us are just different parts of the puzzle trying to achieve um, the same objective. For volunteers, we share our time and resources. For social service professionals, we invest our careers in this space. And we all have a part to play in promoting the well-being of our community and of each other. I was born and brought up in India, studied occupational therapy, and as a young individual took a leap of faith, landed in Singapore. As an OT, I was involved in looking after children with special needs. There was someone who came from NCSS to evaluate a program. One part of the report indicated that Anjan was continuing with therapy while the child was crying. The individual who came to evaluate the program may not have the best understanding of what therapy practice is about. After a few years, I was selected to be part of NCSS. And one of the key responsibilities that I took on is to put some best practice guideline uh, such that there is a document for therapists to fall back on. But not many people know what we do in the social service sector. As a director of the sector manpower, my responsibility is to work with my team to get people to come and join our sector. Because the work that we do is quite challenging. How do we keep people motivated? The social service tribe brings everybody under the banner of tribe as an unifying brand. It is togetherness that we are talking about. We must bring people together to support individuals with dignity and improving their quality of life. The work that we are doing is not a sprint, it's a marathon. <laughs>